The Help 2011 Movie Review and Thoughts. Rounding out this year's Women's History Month by exploring white feminist guilt and white savior complexes. I can appreciate the argument that I should be doing this for Black History Month, but then, sadly, this movie is way too much about white women and does not focus enough on black people of any gender, as much as it would love to believe otherwise. The book was written by a white woman, the movie was written and directed by a white man, and it's not as though it couldn't have been made by black people when it comes to writing and directing seven years later, The Hate You Give was released and there are other movies made in this uh, same you know, time period, including Moonlight, which I hear amazing things about, have not yet been able to watch for myself. So, yeah, as you can probably tell, I respect the craft of this movie, but it is fundamentally flawed. And, let's see, I think that... Yeah, so, the... I realize this is a long, I'm going to can't wake up worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I decide to do so, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so. Hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead and choose the lower of my index finger. And once I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending of both movie and book. And yeah, um, this is rated PG-13. The, yeah, the profanity just barely makes it under the, you know, there's some, yeah, there's some harsh language. And the, yeah, uh, you know, the, the, there is implied violence, but it is off screen. I'm not particularly familiar with either the, the, writer-director Tate Taylor, or the writer of the book, Catherine Stockett. I'm not particularly interested in their other work, considering that this was something that they made. Um, I, I suppose I should say I have heard some good things about The Girl on the Train and Ma, which shares a director, and... Ma also features Octavia Spencer. The... Yeah. Um... The... the yes, I've watched the movie once. I just got done watching it right before I hit record. And plot. I'm just going to quote IMDb here. An aspiring author during the civil rights movement of the 1960s decides to write a book detailing the African American's maid's point of view on the white families for which they work and the hardships they go through on a daily basis. And yeah, you know, 100% the technical aspects, you know, the, this production is immaculate. Um, cinematography, editing, production design, costuming, makeup, everything is spot on. If there was a single bad performance, I mean, I suppose what comes closest is, you know, there's this one kid that I think they say is like four years old. Even she's not bad. Like, it's, you know, and and nearly everyone in the major or supporting, main major and supporting cast are like, you know, incredibly talented actors who, you know, they've done... Incred they've, they've delivered incredible performances elsewhere. They do so again here. And I'm not sure I would even necessarily say that the movie just completely wastes any of, like, the, the, maybe Bryce Dallas Howard. But, you know, Viola Davis, Emma Stone, Octavia Spencer, and Jessica Chastain do actually, you know, they, their, their characters are put through the ringer. They, they, you know, Breast Alice Howard, it's a fairly thankless role. I do appreciate that she took it. I, I do believe that she took it to help shine a light on how terrible some white people were towards African Americans in the South before the Civil Rights Movement, and sadly, also some still. You know, she's pretty much, like, the, she's pure evil, the, the character is, so there's not that much, but, you know, Bryce Dallas Howard throws herself into it. I've seen, 
other movies where she, like, she doesn't really seem like one of those actors who, you know, if you give them material that isn't really up to their, their standards, she's like, Ugh, okay, whatever. No, she, she throws herself into it with, with gusto. Now, the, um, let's see, so, yes, um, the, uh, let's see, yes, so the, the book author, Catherine Stockett, this is from Wikipedia, she grew up in Jackson, Mississippi, where the movie and book are set. After graduating from the University of Alabama with a degree in English and creative writing, she moved to New York City, lived there for 16 years, worked in magazine publishing and marketing, and this is very much, you know, yeah, there's a there's at least one character in the movie that, you know, it's self-insert. And let's see the thing that right. And apparently, um, still Wikipedia. A lawsuit was filed in Mississippi court by Abeline Cooper, a housekeeper who used to work for Stockett's brother, he claimed that Stockett used her likeness in her book. Hines County, Mississippi judge threw the case out of court, citing the statute of limitations. Because, I mean, why should you do the right thing if it's been kind of a while? Stockett denies her claim of stealing her likeness, says she only met her briefly. And, yeah, so the book itself is told, you know, it's, it's first person narration, and it's told from two black perspectives and one white. The, the characters of Abilene Clark, Minnie Jackson, and Skeeter Phelan. And, yeah, so, right from the start of the book. It paints at least one white woman as being bad, in part because she's a bad mother. So, everyone who was in favor of Jim Crow was obviously a terrible person for treating African Americans badly, but when you attack a woman, even a fictional one, for supposedly being a bad mother, it's implying that that's what makes her bad. You know, she's she's bad at being a woman. It's something that makes a lot of women feel bad, even, you know, there are a number of women who are doing the best they can at being mothers. You know, again, obviously, the ones who treat minorities badly are bad people, but not because they're bad mothers. And I'm not saying, you know, I don't have any empathy for abusive parents of any gender, or people who are in favor of Jim Crow, but again, they're bad for how they treat minorities. You know, like, it seems to imply that if they were better women, they wouldn't, you know, maybe they wouldn't be quite so bad. You know, they're, these people are not bad in reality because they're failing at being good women. And, uh, yeah, you know, it really comes across in the, in the novel. Stockton did feel a stronger connection to the, the help. The African-American maid, partially serving as a nanny in addition to doing other housework, than her actual mother, and parts of the book, and, you know, the movie, kind of just feel like her airing grievances she had with her mother, which, you know, I'm not necessarily against her doing, you know, doing in media, but, you know, it, it does sound, they, they tone it down significantly in the movie, but in the book, like, wow, really does sound like this was a very bad mother. I just don't think it belongs in a story that's at least claiming to be sympathetic to black women. Honestly, in both book and movie, I really got the sense that Stockett wishes she was Skeeter, the Emma Stone character. You know, and, and, like, by this very logic, like if we're trying to apply this logic consistently, what if one of these maids wasn't that great with children? Would that make her as bad as the pro-Jim Crow white woman? Like, I think the idea might be that she's trying to draw a comparison, saying if you don't have empathy for people that you're treating this badly, you know, people who are pro-Jim Crow, then you also aren't a good mother, but again, the two don't necessarily go together. There's plenty of bad parents who, yeah, there's bad parents who wouldn't keep slaves. I, I can imagine there might be perfectly fine parents who are slave owners or pro-Jim Crow, like, 
the people who are bigoted against people that they think are nothing like them are not, you know, a, a lot of these people do, you know, at least appear to feel love towards people that they do identify with. You know, that's this isn't how bigotry works. It, it feels very much written by a, a white person who doesn't fully understand bigotry. I'm sure she had her heart in the right place. But, yeah, the, the white savior complex completely ruins what could easily have been a, a really powerful book and movie. You know, honestly, I think it would have made a huge difference to just make it that the book is being written by one of the maids, and they claim it's being written by a white person, you know, it, it does well, and then people realize it was written by, you know, black women, and the point is made, oh, you liked it back when you thought it was a white person, you know. The problem with the white savior complex is that it's actually not less racist than the slave owners of Pro Jim Crow. It just takes the form of paternalism rather than thinking it's okay to own human beings. It's this condescending notion that people of color cannot solve their own problems, that they need us white people to solve them. They truly do not. They just need us to get out of their way. You know, and I do admit, I, I probably... I'm, I'm recovering from having a white savior complex myself. I, you know, I'm trying to, to do better. You know, there, there are places in America that when run by black people without interference by white people thrive. And, it's, and it, yeah, you know, part of the conflict in book and movie is that certain white characters you know, just like in real life, they think that African-American maids should not be allowed to use the same bathroom as the white people who live in the house because bigots target minorities in part by trying to exclude them from, for example, bathrooms. You know, today there's a lot of transphobes insisting that trans people shouldn't be allowed in cis bathrooms, despite the fact that you're much more likely to be assaulted. It's... It's more common for trans people to be assaulted by cis people in bathrooms than the other way around. Let's see, and... Yeah, and, and you know, when, when cis people are assaulted in bathrooms, it tends to be by other cis people. And let's see, the, the, yeah, the book does get into feminism, making a comparison between the struggles of, you know, black people under Jim Crow and, well, white feminists, even though a lot of white women did treat black women terribly, you know, the far superior the hate you give does also bring up misogyny, but it tends to be about misogynoir rather than trying to equate white feminism to the fight for African-American civil rights. And see... The movie is clearly intentionally doing some of these things. There's a lot of positive reviews that boil down to, I loved it, it made me cry, I'm so glad things are better now. It was cathartic for people to watch it. It didn't, it didn't make them go out and take serious political action when the credits rolled. They went back to their everyday lives. I'm not expecting absolutely everyone to go home and read theory, but I am saying there are still tremendous problems with bigotry in America. In the book, Skeeter is described as not being conventionally attractive. The reason she's referred to as Skeeter is because her brother thought she resembled a mosquito, but the movie is afraid of asking an American audience to empathize with a woman who's not conventionally attractive, so instead they cast Emma Stone. Note to the filmmakers, if, you, if you're trying to make this point, Emma Stone is the wrong person to cast. And the movie's endless concessions to try to not upset anyone didn't even fully work. There is still a non-zero amount of user reviews online saying they don't think things were quite as bad as the movie depicts. Because they didn't see it with their own eyes, which is such an ignorant way of trying to approach stuff like that. It reminds me of that Brit who went to Auschwitz and said, No one was gassed here, I can't smell any gas. As if the scent wouldn't dissipate. Let's see. And, and yeah, you know, a lot of white saviorism going on. The author, the book, the writer-director, the movie, and the intended audience is all white savior.
this this comes across as Mean Girls plus racism. I have not watched Mean Girls. I hear wonderful things. I'm not opposed to watching it. Uh, you know, I've watched other movies that are supposedly only for young women and love them. The point I'm trying to make is Mean Girls does not really go with racism. From what I understand, that movie is very much about the way that, you know, high school, you know, girls relate to one another. To take that, you know, which is definitely, that is something that, like, you know, obviously I don't have any personal experience with it being a cis man, but I hear that some, you know, high school, you know, of all genders, some some treat each other really, really badly. But bringing the struggle for civil rights into it is just, yeah. Um, and the yeah, in the book, like, it's also it also comes across some in the movie. The ba basically, it's like the housewives are like the mafia. You know, if if someone, if one maid does something that one housewife doesn't like, then you know everything for her gets ruined because the housewife, you know, places a lot of phone calls and and tells everyone, you know, to to take away everything. And really, the movie kind of comes across as if white men were barely, you know, barely had anything to do with Jim Crow. Like, the men in the movie, most of the time, just seem like they don't really understand what's going on. Like, like they kind of just, there's literally a scene where a white man just walks out of the room when he realizes, ah, oh, this is going to get kind of tense between the maid and my wife. Okay, goodbye, you know. Like, I'm not saying that it would have been that credible if he was trying to help the maid, but the idea that he just washes his hands of it, that, that like, and this is this is an idea that a number of, of young white men like to imagine. I, I wouldn't have taken part in that, like, no, I would have been one of the good ones. And then, you know, which, to be clear, some white people have helped, you know, the struggle for, um, you know, African-American civil rights. But this ain't it, Chief. It wasn't because they just didn't know any better. Like, a lot of white men were... And, and this is something, to the, the book's credit, the book basically says the white women were the ones, you know, they, they placed these calls, they were constantly watching these black people waiting for the, the tiniest little slip-up, and if there wasn't a slip-up, they would just lie. The white men were basically the enforcers. They were the ones who would go out and brutalize black people, even when the, they hadn't actually done anything wrong. But the movie just, you know, yeah, it's written and directed. The, the adaptation was written by a white man. That same white man directed it. I'm, I'm not speaking to his character. I, I can imagine Tate Taylor might be an overall good person. I don't know. But it really reeks of him being uncomfortable with actually underlining, you know, a lot of white men were, were truly terrible under Jim Crow to, to black people. And again, still some today, sadly. And yeah, something that I I did were I did think worked in the the book. In the book, white men basically don't listen to women, especially black women. But you know, yeah, women in general, also not white women either. Which again, I'm not saying those two are equivalent. But there's this one point where a guy has already installed a ceiling fan before even asking the black maid what she thinks about it. You know, in the in the kitchen. She immediately tells him it's a bad idea. He won't even hear her out. Like, she says, I can't work with a, a fan running. And he's like, don't be ridiculous. And, you know, he turns it on. And, of course, it makes a huge mess because that's just, yeah. And, you know, the, the book doesn't, you know, in, in so many words, it basically implies 
he didn't actually apologize. He didn't. He barely admitted that he was wrong. He did end up re having it removed, but then he didn't have a you know have anything done about the hole in the ceiling, because he would have to admit to people, yeah, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have put a fan in a kitchen. And let's see. Yeah, uh, the book treats it as equally tense when the mean girls are in some way threatening to discover something and carry out a punishment as when one of the maids fears a white man killing her and even the latter's clearly established to be the fault of a white woman who lives down to misogynistic stereotypes just yeah so much of this book feels like it's a white woman mad at other white woman white women rather than you know white people being taken to task for jim crow and slavery let's see and, yeah, you know, is it stolen valor if the characters are fictional? Like, Skeeter did not exist. The book which she writes here did not exist. The book and film feel like they're trying to take credits for credit for the civil rights movement. You know, when the, the like... Just make a movie about this actual civil rights movement. There's there's some incredible stories in there. You know, I'm I'm not saying nobody has made it. I'm saying this movie, this book and movie, really don't need to exist. When the you know, the this is like it's like if an alien tried to write a, about like, you know, I don't know, I don't know how it how it really was. Let's just Make something up and make something dramatic, and it's just, why not just focus on, yeah. At one point in the book, one of the maids makes an incredibly racist statement about Native Americans, suggesting that if one were to ask them to help with something important and they gave you a substance to imbibe, it almost definitely would be poison. I appreciate that this probably was something that white and black people alike at the time believed, but the fact that it's specifically said by a black person, a black woman, in a book written by a white woman that's supposed to make white people feel better about Jim Crow, it really smacks of her trying to say, you know, black women are pretty bad themselves. False equivocation. You should not judge someone when the wrong thing they do is clearly in response to severe abuse. You should help them. And yeah, book and movie alike have way too much about Skeeter's love life. That stuff could have been about one of the maids if they really badly wanted it in there. Like, I get, you know, I have not written a book myself, but I have heard that there are certain things you're told. If you approach a publisher, you know, they're, they're going to give you a bunch of notes. And I can imagine, I like to think that... Stockton didn't come up with this, that this was a note, or at least in, maybe she was anticipate, in anticipation of a note, but it really just, yeah, at, at least it doesn't eat up a huge amount of screen time in a movie that's definitely at least a little bit too long. A non-zero amount of characters are severely punished, sometimes just for mistakes, and Sure, sometimes it's a result of a shitty prank that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And, yeah, um, after the the book itself, there's this, what, are the, what do y'all call those? Afterward, you know, yeah. Where it's pretty much Stockton just coming right out and saying she wrote the book in order to grapple with her complex emotions about growing up in Jackson which did not require white saviorism, you know. And let's see, did I want to go into... Yeah, so a um, couple, of, couple of review quotes. So Prairie Miller News Blaze wrote, A she said, she said array of gossipy cat fights targeting snobby southern bells, but that lets the men off the hook while locating the scourge of Jim Crow segregation almost entirely among these demonized upper cross desperate housewives women folk. 
and Viola Davis, so, right, this is Wikipedia, Viola Davis has repeatedly expressed regret over starring in The Help, claiming she feels like she betrayed myself and my people. The film was created in the filter and the cesspool of systemic racism. Bryce Dallas Howard has also mentioned she would not agree to star in the film today, acknowledging it was told through the perspective of a white character and was created by predominantly white storytellers. Let's see, and... Um, let's see, the... Yeah, the the um, so this one person wrote a a IMDb user review, and yeah, I'm just gonna. So this is a direct quote. Well, I grew up during this period in the South, and we always had a black maid. We loved our black maid Veronica, first black person I'd ever seen, and I thought she was made of my favorite stuff, chocolate. I don't blame a child for a white child for looking at a black person and thinking they're made of chocolate. But this, I'm going to go ahead and assume, is written by an adult. And the reason I make that assumption, and I believe it's reasonable to do so, is that he, this person specifically, I'm not going to assume their gender, this person specifically wrote, I grew up during this period, so you know, the 60s, the 1960s, to, as an adult, bring up that they loved their black maid, at least in part because she they thought she was made of chocolate. It's not not racist. And let's see. The, yeah, uh, one user reviewer, and this person gave it a 10 out of 10, said, the cast is divine. It seems as though Tate Taylor assembled the greatest ensemble cast since the last Christopher Guest film. When you're right, you're right. 100%. And the, the, yeah, uh, one person gave it an 8 out of 10 and wrote this, this really compelling, so again, this is a direct quote. Unfortunately, the racial problems in this country have yet to be solved. I remember one black woman and her husband going to Buffalo, New York, and being amazed that they could walk into any restaurant and not be thrown out. Another friend's father became ill while they were traveling in the South. They went to a clinic because her father was of Sicilian descent and had been in the sun. He was cared for on the black side. Being from the North, they had no idea there was a black and white side. And... I think that might, yeah, uh, I, I would definitely say, you know, if you if you like the book, you'll, you'll like the movie and vice versa. And I do think that they did a, a quite good job with a lot of the adaptational changes. There's some stuff that's kind of streamlined. There's some things that are revealed fairly late in the movie, in the, in the book where it feels very manipulative and really I did not think worked and in the movie it's set up very early on instead so that they don't they're not getting rid of the element of the of the story but they're just you know yeah treating it in a way that that is yeah less yeah um yeah, the, the best element of the film, if you can look past the white savior thing, which I don't think you should, it is well produced from a technical perspective. The worst aspect is definitely the white savior complex and the fact that it's not, it doesn't focus enough on how, you know, the, the black people were treated back then. And let's see. And and it definitely it tones down some stuff from from the book that I thought was very powerful. And some of it is simply to to be able to get away with a PG thirteen rating. And let's see the yeah uh, something I saw several others say was that the movie's too long and it definitely. I would have trimmed out at least 15 minutes. That would not have been accomplished 
entirely by getting rid of Skeeter's Love Life, but that would definitely have been a, a start. And let's see. Yeah, the thing I was most worried about was that it would be more interested in making some white people look good than showing empathy for black people, and there's definitely entirely too much of that. But the thing I was most looking forward to was the acting performances, and it did not disappoint. I, I really, you know, I, th I think it's the least we white people can do is, is to try to help shine a light on how bad a lot of us have been to people of color and other minorities that, you know, so, so I do really appreciate when a white actor is willing to look extremely unappealing in, in order to, to make that point. You know, and, and when you, you know, once again, Bryce Dallas Howard nails it in this, and when you listen to her in an in interview, it's very clear she is fairly left-leaning. And see, yeah, uh, the trailer does give too much away, but also gives you a pretty good idea of what the movie is like. The cover does not give too much away and does somewhat give you an idea of what it is like. And yeah, this was quite well received in part because, you know, a lot of white people watched it and you know they they were like oh you know I would definitely have been Skeeter I wouldn't have been you know Hilly Holbrook and let's see so yeah uh, you know if we were talking purely the the technical aspects yeah, this would be an, an 8 out of 10, but because of the, the fundamental flaws, yeah, um, 3 out of 10. And that brings us to the spoiler section. So, I'm just going to add the... There we go. So... I suppose I will start with one of the major changes from book to movie is that in the in the book Constantine's daughter is white passing and basically like she behaves as a you know yeah she, you know, she comes from, I want to say it was Chicago. She comes from a, a, you know, she doesn't come from the South. So she basically doesn't act like the, the, the other black people in the, the, yeah. And the, the, in the movie, you know, they just, have her, you know, she she walk she goes in through the 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 front door as a white person would, even after being told not to, and that's what happens. Where, you know, in the in the book, it goes much, yeah, just straight up. She she was behaving the way the other white people were, the other white women. The, uh, the the way that the white women were and she was a white passing black woman and I'd like to think it was cut for time I, I do have to worry a little that it might be that some in the audience might be like well I mean I'm okay with black people but they can't act white you know I I I hope I'm wrong about that. I really hope that that isn't why the change was made. Because it, it really wouldn't have made a huge dent in the running time. And, you know, in the book, it's right after this that we're told that Skeeter's mom has cancer. You know, and, and she's less apologetic about, you know, it's, it's... In the book, Skeeter's mom is very much a product of her time. Is, is how we're meant to read it, you know, and, and, yeah, 
in in the movie, the fact that she has cancer is brought up quite early. And let's see. Um, I think that might be about yeah. Um, so the the yeah, I um, Celia does not come across as quite as bad in the the movie. Like the book really goes into. Just again, you know, this this really, you know, internalized misogynistic depiction. Um, let's see the, um, uh, yeah, I thought they did some some good. You know, they they made some good choices when you know, given that this is a third person perspective rather than first. You know, when Skeeter's on the phone with. Miss Stein, I want to say, you know, the the um, we actually see Stein, where in the in the book, like it's described, you know, Skeeter can hear she blows out smoke, for example, and in the movie we actually see her, you know, it's more visually dynamic than if we were only focusing on the the Skeeter side. Um, I think that. Yes. Right, so, yeah, near the end, um, you know, Hilly is threatening to sue and expose the book, go after the maids and Skeeter, and the reason that she might not is that people would realize she ate the shit pie, and the book makes a point to have, you know, Skeeter note, oh, you know, Haley has gained weight, she has an unattractive cold sore, and Skeeter's mother, who survived the cancer, chimes in, yeah, it's just, it's so petty, and just, I appreciate the cathartic, catharsis potential here. I think they should have gone with Hilly going to prison instead of eating shit. That way, she has her freedom taken away, as she has happily done to Minnie, and encouraged others in Jackson to do. You know, the, the book ends with Abelie noting Hilly's in a prison of her own making. You know, yeah, something like that. Not all this so petty junk. And I want to underline, I'm not saying that, you know, women are inherently more petty than men. I've, you know, I remember going to school and being around other guys. Like, trust me, men are incredibly fluent in pettiness. It just, it's one of those things where, you know, men and women both do it, but it's treated as if women do it more or worse or stuff like that. You know, to, to make women feel bad for existing. I, I'm not sure I have much else to say. Um... Um, I mean, I do think that, you know, I, I quite appreciate Constantine, you know, telling Skeeter, you know, every day you, you have to ask yourself, are you going to believe the bad things that they say? And, you know, the, the, yeah, that, that is genuinely a really good thing and it it reads it, it comes across as something that Stockton's maid did tell her or possibly something she heard you know a maid say to another you know kid or white kid or something let's see right and yeah uh, so you know the the yeah, the ending has Abilene, you know, now that a white person has shown her what she can do, she's going to go and, and do it, you know, this white savior trope of, you know, as if people of color are incapable 
of coming up with these, you know, yeah, the tools of breaking, uh, breaking out of oppression on their own. Let's see, and I think... That might be about what I had for the Let's see. Yeah, uh, near right near the end, Celia, you know, cooks for for Minnie, and I get it. I get that the thing they're doing is nobody's ever cooked for Minnie before you know she's always cooking for other people she barely gets to to eat any herself finally someone else cooks but it does feel like they're saying you know look she made a good woman out of Celia you know the and and it, it it's this thing of like white people using people of color as steps on the way to us you know self-actualizing it's just yeah, and and the the movie doesn't even seem to realize that that's what it's doing. Like you're you're using a black person as a prop right now, as you're saying that black people shouldn't be treated as props. But yeah, um, this is the end of the video. So hit me up in the comments. Let me know. What are some much better movies about the the struggle for for you know civil rights for for black people? And if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one to more links to stuff like relevant playlists. They suggest that view if you watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiled thoughts on a movie, and recently they tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.